Oh, what a cool matchup there. I'm really enjoying watching this match between these guys. Rambro, Rambro's our scale model designer. We got some extra, extra facts about him in this one. Maybe you could share some of those extra facts with us. Let's take a look at these extra facts. Right, so he created a fully 3D printed hydraulic system for a scale. And mate, you've done an awful lot in the four years that you've been doing this. Like fair yeah. play, that's, that's quite outstanding. Silver medalist at India Skills 2022. Well, mate, it's more important to win the speed modeling tournament and we're all rooting for you. So mate got a silver medal there, but we're going gunning for gold yeah, here. Let's go. Uh, let's <laughs> go indeed but yeah mate good good job on using fusion 360 as well you're doing really well you picked it you picked up an awful lot in the time that you've been using it so uh you've got a bright future ahead of you for that yeah and that world skills we saw uh uh, uh gerbin our world champion who was using inventor a couple of years back uh he was also a world skills champion so that's that's very cool that he's in uh in these different uh india skills world skills all these different cad skills and uh engineering skills challenges so all right, guys. Well, let's get into it here. Our next match between Rambros and Ty. You got any final advice for Rambros on this one, Neil? Uh, I think he possibly lost his cool at the start of that last one. Yep. Um, if if it's looking like the sketch is just getting away from you, if the constraints are just not behaving, just delete it and start again. If you thought you knew which direction you were headed in and it didn't work out, you could have misclicked to start again. Just go again. The other guy isn't, isn't going to be miles ahead of you. Just relax and give it another go. That is excellent advice. I think that's absolutely solid advice. All right, guys. Well, let's see what happens here in this next match, this next battle between Rambros from India using Fusion 360 and Ty from Turkey using a Libre begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? This part is called duck bracket. 1060 aluminum alloy, 2700 kilograms per cubic meter. This is a tier five model. So we're gonna have we're gonna have some time to commentate on this one. So oh my god. Tier five model. Let's see how these guys do. Let's flip over to this CAD versus CAD. They both grabbed a screen capture. Let's see how they begin. Let's see how they create this model. These models with these triangles looking down from the top seem to confuse people. I like Rambro's approach though. Right away, kind of looking down on this thing from the top, creating the the layout geometry for that cylindrical boss at the center. I think that's right where I would have put the origin also. Yeah, you could you could attack this from just model what you see, go top down and then just start sketching out the various different points that seem obvious. And I think that's the approach that Ram Rose is going for. You could overthink this one quite easily and end up getting drowned by it. Yes, yeah, this is one of those when you're, when you're uh, looking at that initial sketch and trying to decide like, how much should I really include in that first sketch? Uh, it could really make the difference between winning and, and losing control of the sketch. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no there's no curved faces apart from like the, the center boss, which is just circular. There's no curved faces or anything. So I think in most normal circumstances, you'd, you'd get it done. It's not the fastest model to to create knock up, but yep. yep. I think once these guys understand it, part, part, the hardest part of this is just like absorbing what it is you, you're going to do. You've got that again, that blue dimension soup on the left hand side. It's just making sense of figuring it out and understanding what direction you're going to go in. Yeah, yeah. I think that that is that is the hardest part um, in a in a controlled environment. But I think in this tournament environment, the hardest part is knowing that everybody's watching me and what's my opponent doing and what's Neil saying about me. I think those things probably factor into. It. <laughs> yeah, interesting approach that Rambrose is going for. He's going to go, think he's possibly going to go for the mirrored approach, which, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Yep. I like this. I really like this approach from Rambrose. Real solid, uh, you know, cre creation, kind of almost creating one one set of geometry at a time, really making sure that he's got it correct before moving on. I think maybe in the last sketch, in the last challenge, he maybe tried to create too much loose geometry at first and then struggled when he was trying to lock it all down. Where this time it looks like he's just kind of doing, you know, one thing at a time, one thing at a time, one thing at a time, and just getting it all in place. I really like that approach. Yeah, it's difficult to commentate on what's going on with the Libra because I'm not totally familiar with what facilities a Libra has. You know, I'm aware of what Fusion Inventors got and what tools that they can pull out of the bag, but. Yeah, I, mean, I would imagine Libra's got the basics, but beyond that, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I like the uh, a Libre. You know, it definitely uh, encourages you to do one feature at a time. So I like the way uh, Ty is going through and, and just kind of taking that approach. I think it really fits in well with our our stated strategy of 
uh, keeping things simple, one simple sketch at a time. Don't make it too overcomplicated, and that way you'll have less to troubleshoot if things go wrong. It's always tricky when we have these like rib or support features that are going right up to another edge also. So I really enjoy watching the runners try to uh, manage their way through that. Yeah, because it's quite, it's natural to, to just think, oh, I'll just create a sketch of the side, draw like a triangle and then just extrude it both ways. But of course the back face isn't going to be touching flush with the, the boss. So exactly. you've got to try and work your way around that. Exactly. How far into it do you make that? And it looks like Ty is uh, running into a little issue here with that, that, uh, I mean, I'm only looking at the isometric image of this green duck part, but it looks like that triangle, maybe that angle is wrong or he's got something else wrong there because it doesn't look like that triangle is working out with his model. So he looks like he's going to be trying to figure out what's going on there. Yeah, he's, he's having a nightmare with that. <laughs> uh, Rambrose is definitely going for the mirrored approach here, which I don't think would be something you do in the real world. This is we're seeing hardcore speed modeling here. You would never, I don't think you would model half of that in, uh, in production and mirror it, but it's, uh, it's potentially going to work from well i think that yeah I, I think that's a you know that's that's something that you you always have to decide is it going to be better to make a pattern or a mirror um or is that something that's going to end up biting me later and i think that's something that really comes from experience and it kind of depends on the industry that you're in um and so yeah i totally get what you're saying there yeah I admit it's personal preference but for me like i would i'm all perfectly for like all for more, like mirroring features and up like voids but not like the entire thing mm. like i don't think that's something that i've see that i'd see often but you know speed yeah. modeling one works. thing that one thing that we sometimes teach our solidworks students is uh when you you know when you're doing a revolve you could draw a center line and then and then when you create your dimension it gives you the diameter instead of the radius well yeah. you, you can kind of use that same trick if you know you're going to do a mirror all you could draw the center line and then use a double dimension and then instead of using it for a uh, for a diameter, it would end up becoming like what the full dimension is when you mirror the model later on in the tree. So that's like mm -hmm. a little little trick you can use sometimes if you know you're going to be mirroring. I'm really I'm really enjoying seeing this uh, Fusion 360 interface. I like that dark background, and I like the uh, I like the way the sketch is showing up in light there. I just really aesthetically speaking, I'm I'm really enjoying seeing what this interface looks like. Yeah, it's criticized for not having by me as well, but for not having a dark theme. It's it's one of the things that puts me off. I do like the aesthetic of it. It's very simplistic. Mm -hmm. It's mod, but it, it misses a dark theme. Like dark themes my go to these days for everything. Nice, nice. Yeah, I remember on shape added dark theme a, a couple of, maybe a couple of months ago. And uh, when they did, I was like so happy because it just does everything. Like every menu, every interface, all the fonts switch, you know, swap colors, just it does everything. I've been in some other CAD systems where it has like a, like a sort of gets you started with dark mode, but you still have to do a lot of tweaking to the settings. So it's very, it's, I'm always thankful when a program has a dark mode option. Yeah, it's just considerate for the people that are using it or think uh, Rambros is <laughs> potentially. Yeah, that was impressive. Rambos went from from zero to hero there pretty quick. Yeah, he knew where he was going. I think he's just yeah. doing some final checks now. But yeah, dark mode, it's 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 just considerate for the users who are sitting staring at a screen all day, just dim just to dim things down and make it easier on your eyes. That's what it's for. Yep, for sure. All right, well, we're keeping an eye on Rambros here on the left. This is a tier five part, so we did expect this one to run for a little bit longer. I'm very thankful that I've had so much time to talk with you, Neil, about these things. Uh, if these, if all these models were done in like two minutes, Ricardo had a run last week. I think he did the model in like two minutes and forty seconds. So uh, it's wow. nice, nice to have a few extra minutes to talk to you. Yeah, I could talk about this stuff all day, but I'm like, try, I'm, I'm trying to cut myself off because it's been a couple of times where we've been not run on, and then the answers come in, and we're, we're yeah. just busy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so you see, it looks like Rambros is using a similar uh, pl uh, plug. Okay, Rambros coming in with his answer: one, four, nine, two grams. And that is correct. And I was going to say, it looks like Ram Bros was using a, a plugin, an API plugin or a custom macro to help calculate the mass or show the mass of some different uh, different materials. We saw Great Neat using that earlier in the tournament in his first match too. So I love that. I love that the uh, Fusion 360 community is coming together with these kind of custom tools to help, help in the tournament and help with these uh, speed modeling challenges. We saw something similar in the OnShape community. There's a, an OnShape plugin that shows you the answer to all the different materials uh, all in one interface. So very cool to see that from uh, from Rambros using that plugin. Very, very cool. Yep, congratulations, Rambos. Yeah. So, Rambos. wow. So guys, we are down to 
possibly the final match. Once again, going to three matches. I love how evenly these guys are matched up in this tournament. Uh, I think that with the, uh, I think what happened, I saw what happened with Ty there in the, uh, I'm gonna flip back to our runner screens just for a second here. I think I saw what happened with Ty there in the beginning of that match. I think he made that triangular shape tangent to the, uh, uh, to that circular boss that's sticking up, but I don't think